sometime around the year 1400 on the Baitas calendar. The two most powerful men in the world needed to have a meeting. Earlier that month, Lumnar Grimm had heard of an attack in the south. It was said that raiders from al Baifas had crossed the border into Vestoria and raided a small village in the desert. Lumnar was worried that something like this could escalate into a full war between the two powers. So they got in contact immediately with the prophet of al Baifas, Ubadrith, and the two men decided to meet in the city of Bordeaux. When the two men arrived, they shared small talk about their trips to Hordo. But Lumnar was not one to make small talk and wanted to get straight to business. Ubaidrath had offered Lumnar coffee and dinner while he was there, but he rejected it. After Lumnar had abolished the Vestorian council, he had become increasingly paranoid about his surroundings. While in his council chambers one day, he had heard Vestari guards speaking foreign tongues. Lumnar at the time shrugged it off as either him hearing things or just going crazy. But he was constantly worried about people making moves to remove him as emperor. And what's one good way to remove him as emperor? Giving him poison. He rejected the food. Ubadrith could tell that Lumnar was not one to make small talk and gave him the floor. Lumnar confronts Ubadrith about the incident, and Ubadrith calls the accusation moronic. Ubadrith argued that if he were to attack Vestoria, that the lives of Baitas worshippers in the Vestorian Empire would be at risk. And Ubadrith was not really someone who was willing to risk that. Both of these men were old enough to remember the string of three long Agaric wars in the south, where hundreds of thousands died and began to doubt the legitimacy of the attack. The old Agaric governors of the south of Vestoria were always looking for an excuse to start conflict. Anything that could give them a little bit more autonomy in the Vestorian Empire, they would try. So the two began to shrug off the incident as a false flag attack by Agarics in the south. The two men then ask each other for their ambitions. These men were the two most powerful men in the world by far. And the world was running out of land. al had united with the Kaisreg of Sternhel in the west, and allied Alza and Great Ungla in the east, where the Vestorian Empire had allied the Kaldari in the north and had strong relations with those in the west. The world was locked up. Ubaidreth brought up that when the Bog Republic had bid off the territory of the Ferdunks, Lumnar had challenged Ubaidreth's bid and almost got into a bidding war. Lumnar told Ubadrith that him bidding on the Ferdunks was not trying to spite Abaifas, but the two men quickly changed the subject. Ubadrith brought up his main points of the meeting, which was to talk about the new religion of celestialism. The Vestorian Empire worshipped the moon and had a whole religion about it, and recently a moon prince had created a new religion around the moon faith. The religion was called celestialism and it worshipped more than just the moon but it quickly spread around the Vestorian Empire and quickly started leaking over the border into portions of al Baifas. One of the key things was that it was leaking into the province of Aquitania, which the two men were actually meeting in right now. Aquitania had been one of the original homes of Baitas, and of course, Ubadrith, being a prophet of Baitas, was not happy. Ubadrith wanted to know what Lumnar was going to do about this new religion. Lumnar was not particularly a fan of the religion either, himself being a moon worshiper. The two men landed an agreement to try to convince the local lords and governors to allocate more resources into converting people from celestialism. But the religion was taking off, and it was taking off fast. Ubaidrith realized that this topic as well was going nowhere, and moved on to the final topic of their conversation, Ricolia. Now this was a topic that both men could agree on. Ricolia was dangerous, and it needed to be contained. About 50 years earlier, Ricolia was occupied by four powers, Tensal, Dyrex Kadavir, Bifos, and Vestoria, and the two men wanted to keep it that way. Ubadrath was worried that Cruz Khan, who was a prominent Vestorian but also Ricolian governor, would want to reunite Ricolia and 
possibly gain its independence. The two men agreed that if Khrus Khan were to declare war on all Bifos's western holdings, then it could lead to a massive war on a scale never before seen. So the two men talked about ideas on how to keep this from happening. The first idea was to give Khrus Khan his province as an independent kingdom, and al Bifas would give Khrus Khan their provinces that they occupy. The deal would hopefully keep the Rakolians happy in their homeland independent. But they both quickly realized that this was probably a bad idea. Just 50 years earlier, before the occupation, the Rakolians were in a massive civil war. The thought was that even if Rakolia is independent, they will still never be happy. They both agreed to keep very close eyes on their Rakolian provinces, and to try to make sure that the region stays neutered forever. The two men shook hands and got ready to leave. But before leaving, Lumnar gave Ubedrith a worrying last word. Lumnar told Ubedrith, I worry about the future sometimes. Not just the future of Astoria, but the whole world. All it takes is one unfortunate event, and we all may be thrown into total war. Ubedrith took it lightheartedly and tried to brush it off before the two men left. The two men would never see each other again. These two men were probably the two most powerful people in Nkunzi to have ever existed, and they just met in the same room. They were both older and a little bit crazy, but they were good at their jobs. But it seems that both men really knew what they were doing and were really attempting to keep the world at peace. To everyone else in the world, it seemed that these two men were literally keeping the world alive. But the two men couldn't be more different. Lumnar Grimm comes from a long line of ancient Vestorian emperors, going all the way back to the Bronze Age. He's a direct descendant from every single Eldari and Vestorian ruler. He emphasized the state over religion, and he was a man of few words. Ubedrith, on the other hand, was chosen to lead Albaifos. He was the kind of guy that you could talk to all day, and was very friendly. He emphasized his religion over the empire. Lumnar returned to Stendari and had much to do. The biggest thing on the table for Lumnar was that a rogue general in the province of Dahe had risen up against his niece. His niece was the current Empress of Dahe, and he felt like he deserved it more. Emperor Bu, the rogue military emperor, had chased his niece Feng Ka Wai out into the desert, and seized control of the throne room. Lumnar needed to decide whether this could stand or he wanted to bring Feng Ka Wai back into power. Lumnar decided that letting a rogue general take control of a province in the Empire was not a good look and would probably cause others to try to do the same. Emperor Bu was invited into the city of Donghi, where he was to meet with Lumnar about being recognized as the true emperor of the Dahe. Lumnar met him there with a bunch of his Vestari guards. And you know what those Vestari guards did? They killed him. Feng Ka Wai was brought back into the capital, and the matter was settled. Not long after Lumnar returned to Stendari from his little trip in the Dahe, Lumnar died of old age, and his son Vekel Grimm would be crowned Etheri Empera, or the Celestial Emperor. Vekel was the first emperor to fully embrace the celestial faith over the moon faith. In Alcasa, the situation wasn't much better. Ubodrith had gotten sick immediately after he had returned to the capital, and he put his right-hand man, Scythios Oxwan, in charge while he was bedridden. Ubodrith would never get out of bed again. Who was Scythios Oxwan? Well, Scythios was from a far eastern city called Al Al Moravid, and was a student of Ubedrith. But again, the two men couldn't really be more different. Scythios was a man of action, and saw the Vestorian Empire as the one thing keeping Al Bifas from being what it could be. Ubedrith failing to see this might be the biggest failure of his life. Scythios' first duty was to deal with the province of Rakolia, which was getting a little bit antsy. The Rakolians had been threatening to revolt for a while, and Scythios needed to do something about it. Scythios had been warned by Ubedrith that he needed to keep Rakolia neutered, and a deal was struck with Lumnar of Astoria, where both empires would do their part. Scythios would see what he could do. Scythios traveled to the ancient city of Azolidia, where he met the puppet governor, Colus. Colus brought up that keeping control of the province was getting out of hand, and they needed to do something quick. 
but it soon came clear to Scythios that Colus was probably in on it, and probably wanted the province to revolt. Soon after some more talking, the two entered negotiations. Colus would do his part in keeping the province of Rocolia under Al Bifos's control, under a few conditions. The prince of Bifos must stay in Rocolia, aka Ubodreth's son, must for one. He would stay in Rocolia, but he would live a good life. He would stay in Rocolia until he was called to go lead the empire. In Rocolia, he would be educated and taken care of. The second condition was the complete autonomy of Rocolia under Albifos. There could be no preaching of foreign religion, and Rocolia couldn't be called into wars. Complete autonomy in all but name. The last demand that Colus had was to see progress within 40 years at a united Rocolia. Colus wanted to make sure that Scythios or whoever was leading the empire was going to do their part in reuniting Rocolia. If they weren't going to rebel, then what was the point of not rebelling if they weren't going to get united? The entire point of rebelling was to get united. Scythios agreed, and Mustferwine was brought from al Casa all the way to Azalidia, and was left as a hostage. Already, the agreement that Lumnar and Ubadrith had in Hordo was falling apart. The new Vestorian Emperor, Vekel, had fully embraced Celestialism, something that the two men in the meeting had agreed to attempt to suppress. And Rokolia was now promised that in 40 years it would be united under Al Bifos. Also something that the two men agreed to try to suppress. Scythios knew that he didn't have much time. Uniting Rokolia under Colus's deal meant taking land from Vestoria one way or the other. And if he was going to take land from Vestoria, he needed Vestoria to be weaker. Scythios thought that many of the governors in Vestoria might be fairly unloyal, and started sending out negotiations to many of these governors to see if they would launch rebellions against the Empire. The first region that Scythios contacted was the Dahe, under the now unified Daiten Heilong dynasty. Scythios promised that the Dahe would be able to annex much of the land on the southern coast if they were to rebel. But Feng Kawai of the Dahe, after the meeting, immediately informed Vekel of Scythios' ambitions. Vekel was not his father, and wanted to prove himself to the world. Each Grim had outdone their father, in both greatness and military achievements, going back hundreds of years, and Vekel wanted to do his part in keeping that alive. Vekel used the excuse of Scythios talking to the Dahe to try to get them to revolt as an excuse to declare war. What was just before a seemingly peaceful solution to a few minor issues had immediately spiraled out of control. Both of the level-headed, competent rulers of the world were now either dead or bedridden, and the greatest war of Nkunzi's history was about to begin. Boys, in the description there is a temporary link to join the RP, as well as a link to join the Nkunzi hub server which I have just made and is still under construction, all about discussion of the game and just getting further involved with the community. Thanks. Thank you.